Hey guys, I'm Avish. This is the 31st video of .NET MAUI with Sync Fusion Control series. In the previous session, we discussed about the linear gauges and understood the scale, orientation, labels and text pointers, customization features of linear gauge control. We have also added interactions to the linear gauge control. Please review the previous session before proceeding. In this session, we will focus on understanding the Sync Fusion Maps control. The Sync Fusion Maps control is a powerful data visualization component that displays statistical information for a geographical area. Its rich feature set includes tile rendering from OpenStreetMap, Bing Maps, Google Maps, and other tile providers. The shape layer has highly interactive and customizable features such as selection, tooltip, legends, markers, bubbles, and color mapping. Users can generate maps to determine many features such as population density, sales, political boundaries, weather, elections, and routes. Let's now focus on the key areas in this session. Shape layer feature allows to render GeoJSON or shapefile data into custom maps or geographical area shapes on a shape layer for powerful data visualization. Customize the maps to the desired look using built-in options. Data labels in a shape layer provides basic information about shapes by displaying their names and more. If required, we can trim or hide the labels when they exceed the shape bounds. Selection feature allows user to highlight a shape to focus attention to a specific area. Using this functionality, we can navigate to pages and show detailed information about a selected area. Zooming and panning is another feature that allows user to zoom in any layer for a closer look at a specific region by pinching, scrolling the mouse wheel or using a trackpad. Pan the map to navigate across regions. Zooming and panning can be enabled for both the shape layer and the tile layer. The other advanced features of Maps include tile layer, interactive map, legends, and routes. We will discuss the other features in the upcoming sessions. Let's now focus on the shape, data, selection, and zooming and panning features in this session. Let's now switch to the coding and get going. Let's open our previous project that we have been working on. Right click on Sync Fusion MAU app. Then manage NuGet packages. Let's search for syncfusion.maui.maps. Let me choose this. The latest table is 24.2.6. However, I have been using the little older version of it. So let me choose the 36 version. I'll be upgrading it in the next session. Right now, let me continue with the 36 version and install the Syncfusion MAUI map component. Once it is installed, let me right click on this view, add new item, choose .NET MAUI under the dotted MAUI content page, let me rename this as maps view dot XAML file. XAML is created. Let me switch to the XAML file and remove the vertical stack layout and the label and start creating a scroll view here. Let me close this scroll view. Within this scroll view, we are going to create the map component. So let me switch back to the sync fusion and drag and drop the SF maps component. Notice that we now have the XML namespace called map. Let me rename it to maps for convenience. Once this is done, you, you do notice that we have a shape source for the map, which states that the world map is the default shape for this maps component. We can change the shape source to US, Germany, Britain, whatever countries we can. Also, we can take a deep dive on the layers and other stuff in a moment. But for now, the shape source is defaulted to world map json file with a height and width request of 250 let me change this uh, height and width request to you know i'll keep it as 600 by 600 and then let's run this application to notice the output now before running the application as you all know switch to the solution explorer and then let me open up the app shell.xaml and create a new flyout item here within the flyout item i've been I will copy the existing one and change it as maps view within the title as well and change the data template to maps view and the route as maps view as well. And within the maps view dot XAML file, I'm going to add some space to this title. Everything is set. We just need to run the application and notice the output. Let me run this application. Look at that. We now have the world map here and we can choose the countries. Let's add some customizations to this. 
And now let's say if you want to change this from world map to USA map, you can use the Syncfusion CDN and then change this from world map to USA. Similarly, we can also change it for Europe. So let me restart this application and show you the output. Look at that. We now have the output as the US map. Let me switch back and change it to Europe and restart the application. Look at that. We now have the Europe as the output. Syncfusion provides the shape source as a GeoJSON file for most of the country information. I have noticed that Syncfusion doesn't have the GeoJSON file for few countries. In those cases, we can use the open data portals or GIS data providers and inject the shape source and bind the data to the maps control. I will show you in a moment how to do that. But for now, you're all now familiar how to bind different shape source to the SF maps, which is the Syncfusion maps control. Let's now add some customizations to the map control. Now let's understand how the map works. If you observe here, there is a link for the CDN for Syncfusion where we have, we are downloading the worldmap.json file. Now let's say I want to download the JSON file using this link. Let me copy this link and download the JSON file and open this JSON file in my notepad. If you observe that, this is non-formatted. So let me format this JSON file using the JSON formatted .org where I can format or beautify this JSON file. Now we have a formatted file on the right side. So let me minimize this and open the formatted file. Now if you observe that, each and every GeoJSON file consists of a feature collection and within that there is a CRS. You can ignore it for now. When I collapse that, you have a features associated with each each of these feature collections. Now this there is a features array and within the feature array, let's say if it is a world map.json, we have properties stating that Afghanistan is one country within the continent Asia and the geometry of the Afghanistan is a polygon and it has got its own coordinates. Now these are the coordinates which are binded to the Syncfusion maps control. Let me collapse this coordinates and notice that there are many features available including Afghanistan, we have Angola as a country which is a continent of Africa and so on. Now let's understand United Arab Emirates. So within the Arab Emirates, it is a continent of Asia and it's got its own geometry. Similarly, we have Argentina and other n number of countries which has got its own latitude and longitudes as polygons or multi polygons. We will have a separate session of understanding of polygons for Syncfusion maps. But for now, please understand that each and every GeoJSON consists of a type called feature, properties, and geometry. We are going to bind either the name or continent to the map. Now, right now, whenever I run this application, we have a simple maps view, and this is the map which we have. We are binded by Europe. Now, let me change this to bind as world map and show you the output. Look at that. We now have the world map, but it's not highlighting any of the country. Let's say if I mouse over on US, you see that the US is highlighted. However, we are not showing any country name or any other information related to the country, which will be adding some advanced attributes or the custom attributes to the Syncfusion maps control. Now that you understand the GeoJSON file and how the map works with the GeoJSON file, let me switch back to the component and start adding more customizations to it. Let me switch back and add a few properties. Share stroke equal to light let's choose some light blue shape fill as light salmon and then switch back and notice the output let's restart the application and notice that we now have different shape stroke and shape fill let's also add some shape hover fill and shape hover stroke as well let me name the hover stroke as blue and then shape hover fill as light blue or let me change the hover fill as dark green let me restart the application and notice output. Now notice that on the hover, the selected country is changing to green with a different stroke as well. Now let's see how we can add labels to this worldmap.json for different countries. Let me stop the application. Let's expand the model, right click on the model, add new item, create a class called country model. We're going to extend it for states and cities and other stuff. So I'm just creating for the world map and calling it as country model.cs within that let me create a public change it to public class create one property public string name let me tab it to create automatically the visual studio has created a property called public string name now within the view model 
right click add new item and call this view model as maps view model now let me change this to public again within that let's create the constructor by pressing the tab the constructor is created and now let's create an observable collection of the country model so i would say public and let me import system dot collections dot object model and change it as observable collection similarly what we have done earlier in our previous session and we would say country model that's all the moment i use this we have the country model and i'm going to call it as country list and notice that we have the using statement automatically imported for country model once this is done we are going to generate a source and add the country list to bind it to the xaml file now when i switch back in order to bind the information we can do and add the data one after the other in the model or we can dynamically bind that so let me right now you know add static data with a new observable collection and let's say country list dot add new model new country model and call it as let me add name to this before that let me switch to the country model and create a constructor to add the data so i'm going to say oh, i don't need the description i'm going to say public model and i would say string name and this name is going to be associated with this equal to name that's it let me switch back again and add the name called argentina let me add one more called india now that we have added few country list here let me switch back to the map view.xaml file and add a binding context to the scroll view so within the scroll view i'm going to add dot binding context and let's get the binding context from the xml namespace from the view model the way we have done for the other applications so let me switch back to the linear gauge.xaml and see if we have used any view models in the linear gauge we have not used any of the view models in the data visualization chats we have used the view models so i'm going to take this namespace and switch back to the xaml file and add the namespace and then we are going to say binding colon and look at that we have the option to choose a view model file so let me choose maps view model and close this binding now that we are by we have binded the data we need to add the data source to the map so i would say data source equal to binding of look at that we have different values so i'm going to use the binding of the model that we have created which is our country model and this country model is exposed through our maps view model and we're calling it as country list so let me switch back and say country list look at that auto prompt option is shown by visual studio and we are binding the data once the data is binded we need to attach the primary value path as well as the shape data field so the primary value path would be the name so i would change the primary value path to name and shape data field as name as well so i would say primary value path is name then shape data field path is name which is from our geojson file so if you notice that we have in the world map we have the name as a shape data path and primary data path as the name given by the country model here that's all now let me run the application and show you the output notice that even though we have added the data the data labels are not visible in order to achieve that let's switch back to the code and see what we are missing here look at that we don't have show data label properties to do so let's change it to true let's add that back and within the shape layer we need to add few data label settings so let me add the data label settings as shape layer dot data label settings within the data label settings we have data label path so let's say maps dot map data label settings and then we are going to give a data label path as name and then within that name we are going to add maps colon map label settings dot data label style and i'm going to add the label style as map label style with a font size as 12 let me close this restart the application and notice the output let me change this data label path to name which is the capital one look at that we now have the country name displayed on top of the map related to those countries now we have manually added the country names and binded the data label settings however in the real world we are supposed to 
bind the data names of the countries dynamically. Let me show you how to do that. Let me switch back to the maps view C sharp file and read the JSON and automatically add the names to the collection. Let me switch back to the view model of maps view model and add the country list dynamically using the JSON file. Let me stop the application. Let's create a method to bind the data dynamically. Let's create a method called generate source. So I would say public white generate source as the method name and we are going to invoke this generate source from this maps view model. So let me invoke this method and comment the rest of the code. Let me remove the code. We don't need this at all. Now whenever we do this, let's assign the country list within this generate data source method or generate source method. We are going to pull the worldmap.json file into the URL. Now let me use the web client to get the complete data from this URL. So we are going to use the using statement and wrap the client object around it. And then within this, we are going to add a try catch to catch the exception. And let's console the exception that we are getting a error while retrieving the JSON data. So now once this is done within this try catch block, we're going to create a string object string get string which would be the JSON data and look at that the Visual Studio is prompting us to tab a client or download string. We are going to download the string and after this what we are going to do is we are going to deserialize the object from the JSON string. Before we deserialize the JSON into an object we have to construct the object into the country model file. In order to generate the class objects from the given JSON file, we can use JSON to C -sharp .com and then I'm going to copy the worldmap.json output on the left side of it and click on convert button. Look at that. We have the classes generated and notice that we have a prompt on how we can deserialize the object from the JSON response. That is how simple it is. We don't need to recreate the classes by looking at the JSON. Everything is available online. So I recommend you all to use the flexibility of using converting the JSON to C sharp through online. Now let me switch back to the Visual Studio and then add these models within this country model namespace. So I'm going to add all of these things and switch back to the view model and also choose this auto suggestion that they have given. So, so we are going to give root deserialize class equal to JSON convert dot deserialize object. In order to do that, let's switch back to the code. And over here, I'm going to give root geojson equal to JSON convert dot deserialize object. Let me make it to capital over here. And then we're going to loop through the geojson. So I'm going to say for each not in the country model though, where item in the geojson dot, look at that, we now have the features and within the features, I'm going to use the features property and say country list dot add, which is our new country model constructor. Within the constructor, we are going to pass item dot properties dot name. That's all. And we are going to generate this source in the constructor. Now it is going through loop through these features, get the properties dot name and bind those country list to this data model. Now let's run the application and notice the output. Look at that. All the country names have been binded to this maps control. However, it is very clumsy as we have the countries overlapping. So we need to enable the zoom on this maps control. In order to do that, let me add few more attributes or the custom properties within the maps view.xaml file. So I'm going to say maps dot maps colon map shape layer dot zoom pan behavior. Let me close this within the zoom pan behavior. I'm going to add enable zooming equal to true. Let me close this. Notice that I have removed all the width and height so that the map will auto fit to the Windows application. Now let me restart the application and notice the output. Look at that. Let me zoom it and use the my control key on my system and we are able to now zoom the maps. With this, I believe you have a good understanding of the sync fusion map control. In the following session, we will cover the advanced features of the maps control. Till then, thank you for listening and have a great day.